about 60 people are getting settled into their seats. And they've come to hear what I have to say. And I have to talk for a whole hour. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. <clears throat> Today I want to share with you some tips, some lessons that I've learned in giving an hour-long presentation. So we're back in the auditorium, the audience is now settled, and I'm being introduced. I walk out to the center of the stage, and I give my rocket fire 30 second introduction that I had memorized word for word. And then I draw a blank. <laughs> but I realize I have a safety net, so I run back and I grab my Linus blanket. <laughs> as the handout that I have prepared for my audience. It's the map I'm going to use to make sure I hit all the subjects I want to hit. And I'm going to use this as a guide to help me through for the next hour. See, I take this as a tremendous responsibility. If I screw this up, I haven't screwed up one hour. I've screwed up 60 hours worth of time. It's a week and a half of a full-time job, just <laughs> flushed. It's like when you're at pole position at an intersection. Everyone behind you in your lane is counting on you. <laughs> to not dilly-dally, to be aware when that light turns green and it's clear that you proceed forward without hesitation. Because your job is to make sure you get as many people through that intersection <laughs> as possible. Now the car behind you, they're just dabbing away on their phone, checking their email, and that's okay because they do not have the social obligation and responsibility of that front position. So I'm giving the presentation, and I have this awesome responsibility. And if we fast forward a few presentations, there's a time where things go dreadfully wrong. You see, my presentation is an internet-based presentation. So I have a laptop that's hooked to a projector, and my laptop needs to talk to the internet. So I'm in a building in Columbia, the Technology Center. The building's on Technology Drive, but this building doesn't have Wi-Fi. And to make things worse, this building apparently seems to be wrapped in some sort of copper mesh designed to block any signal from getting in or out. And I'm panicking. I'm ready to give my presentation, or not ready, dealing with these techno technical hurdles, and then I hear it, that sound of horror in the hallway, the people coming up, lunch is over, and I know they're <laughs> going to fill the room soon. I'm finally able to establish the faintest connection. Apparently, there is a tiny tear in this <laughs> copper mesh. But I realize I'm not prepared. I should have had an offline presentation ready. Now, the presentation went okay. I didn't waste their time, and that was good. But I realized my notes didn't work as well as they should have. Now, your audience wants you to succeed. They want you to deliver a wonderful presentation, because they don't want you to waste their time. They want to be entertained. And of course, you want to give a good presentation. So I have a couple of tips I'd like to share, some lessons I've learned. The first thing, it's OK to use notes. If you have to talk for a whole hour, that's a lot of content to cover. And using notes allows you to walk through and hit all the points you want to hit. My next tip is something I came up with where I used a stopwatch and a map of all the subjects I wanted to hit. And I had a time index of where I wanted to be. And I left this on the podium. And as I returned to the podium, using my laptop for the overhead display, I could see if I was on time with my message or not. The one thing I wanted to avoid was rushing at the end and not being able to answer the questions that the audience might have for the subject. It was important that I gave each subject the correct amount of time. And the last tip is to control your audience. This was something I learned in kind of a hard way. <laughs> One person asked a question. I answered it. And then another audience member 
added on and contributed, which is wonderful. But then they started the sidebar conversation, and everyone was watching them. And it was great content, but I looked at my watch, my stopwatch, and I realized the minutes are ticking by. And while it was good information, I had to get back on message. So I politely stopped them. I said, resume this conversation after the presentation. We need to move on to the next subject. And something magical happened. Everyone in that room turned and looked at me. <laughs> and I realized I was the authority in that room. Since they had come to see me, I realized I had a certain power. I could guide them where I wanted to go. And that's something you can use in your presentation if things get a little out of hand. <clears throat> the last thing that I'd like to share, my presentation, I am now two minutes shy of how long I should be speaking. At that presentation where things went horribly wrong and I did not have an overhead screen to demonstrate, I ended 20 minutes early. <laughs> and I had a debate in my mind. Do I waste 20 minutes regurgitating what I had already covered? Or do I let them go? Because after all, we're at a conference. People want to be social. They might want to check their email. Perhaps they want to call home, check out a family member. I decided to end the presentation, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I've said what I have to say, <laughs> and it's I'm going to let my audience go. Thank you very much.